for Texas. Three starters in this starting lineup, including their leading scorer, Timmy Allen, who was an all-conference player at Utah for three seasons before transferring in. Seton Hall led by Jared Rudin at 16 and a half per game. Third year of the Big 12 Big East battle. One more scheduled season. One of the marquee matchups, though, here in this 2021 edition. Seton Hall in Texas. Off we go from Newark, and it's the Pirates looking for their second top ten win of the season, starting with it. Well, and again, it goes back to tempo and pace. Can the Seton Hall team being at home speed up the Longhorns who wants to play a little more methodical pace? The previous top ten win was at number four Michigan for the Pirates as Roden's shot is short. Texas, meanwhile, their one true test was against Gonzaga. They lost that game November 13th. They're 6-1. and one. They've been impressive in the six wins. They just haven't played anybody since that game. Here's the steal for Roden. He's headed the other way. And the first bucket of the night is a Roden slam. And one thing you can't do if you're Texas on the road, that's live ball turn. Because you allow not only to get an easy basket for Seton Hall, but now the crowd becomes a factor because now they're involved in the game off of a breakaway dunk. Here's Trey Mitchell, one of those transfers for the Longhorns. Average 18 per game in two seasons at UMass, and he buries his first shot. Texas coming off a 30-point win against Texas Rio Grande Valley. It was tight after half. They pulled away in the second. Alexis Yetna offline. Oak Obiago with the rebound. Here's one of the big advantages for Seton Hall. That is size inside. And Obiago, who's on the floor for his defense, scores. Well, big, like you said, it, it, when the shot goes up, Trey Mitchell or Christian Bishop, I know it's difficult at times when you're helping sometimes, but you got to find the body. And if Obiago is underneath, if you can wedge him out just a little bit in order to keep him off the offensive glass, you'll benefit. But that time, the size won out to see the Hall and Obiagi, who is 7-2. The biggest player that Texas will play is 6-9. That's Trey Mitchell, who's got it here. Now Marcus Carr, top transfer in the country out of Minnesota. Can't hit. Here's Miles Kale. He gets fouled by Carr. Well, you want to start it over. I mean, early and often right here defensively, Jed Rowe with the quick hands, able to get out and transition and finish the easy two. And then Mitchell kind of right back. Now, that's one thing he can take advantage of is bringing out Obiago outside because if not, this is where the size becomes an advantage for Cedar Hall. Maybe not a direct post, Joe, but an offensive rebound put back. And Seton Hall has been one of the top 25 rebounding teams in the country this year with that size. Richmond can't hit. Texas in the first year under Chris Beard. Six and one, seventh in the country. Blend of talented transfers, key returners. This is one of those players in Courtney Ramey. Mismatch against Obiagu. See if he can take advantage. He lays it off, and Mitchell takes advantage of it. And that's a situation where I don't think that yet Alexis Yetna has to come and help because Obiago has him under control, forces him to shoot over the top. Once you commit, now you're able to drop that pass off. Easy basket inside to trade Mitchell. He has the first four for the Longhorns. Roden bounces inside for Yetna. Over Mitchell now. And Mitchell's got the rebound this time. And, and that's a good help by Mitchell, but then also to get back and get that defensive board. The Texas here on the offensive end. They're one of the slowest working teams in the country, but very efficient. Speaking of, that's exactly what Mitchell's been so far. He has the first six for Texas. And when you're methodical and slow, shot selection is very important. And right there, just a quick little pick and roll. Mitchell able to operate at the elbow, showing his range from 15 feet. Roden switched hands, couldn't finish. Mitchell is tough in the stat sheet already. Well, that's the reason why Chris Beard put him back, put him into the starting lineup five games ago. A little bit more versatility offensively. A little bit more size at 6'9 than Christian Bishop at 6'7. Six, six, and sometimes you, you want to help your teammates, but sometimes you don't have to. Right here, Obiaku has him under control. You don't have to come over and help because now that dime goes to the rolling Trey Mitchell. See, right there, it was going to be a tough shot, I think, for Ramey to shoot over the top. 
then if you stay at home, the ball comes off you in a good position. The defense will rebound a little bit too much over help situation that time. by Seton Hall. Miles Kale straight away three. Drops in. Shooter's touch. Miles Kale in his second game back from a groin injury. Gives Seton Hall the lead. Fifth year senior, part of this veteran group for the Pirates. Really, both these teams, a lot of veteran players, relatively old players. Kale tracks this one down in the corner and looks to run. The average age of the players on these two teams over 21. Here's one of those veterans in Yetna who's got his first points. And a 9-6 lead for the Pirates here in this top 25 matchup early on in Newark. The rim protection, but also like you saw with the, with the offensive rebound. So hopefully it's a tweak. He can get it looked at, retaped, and come out and be a participant uh, for the remainder of the game. Well, the thing that Kevin Willard has going for him is that Tyree Samuel has already started to take more and more time from Obiagi. Not quite as good defensively, much better offensively. Right. right. He's in here for, for Seton Hall. Well, and what Sanders gives you, too, is you see him guarding Trey Mitchell. Is when Trey goes on the perimeter, or even a Christian Bishop, you see the defense you talked about right there. Sanders can shuffle his feet a little bit better and guard and switch on the pick and roll like this right there. More so than Obiago. So you may lose a little height, but you gain a little bit more perimeter defense. And a lot more in the way of scoring. He had 22 in their last game. And he's made just a huge jump here in his junior season. Well, the talent has always been there for Tyree Sam. It was a matter of in between his ears believing in what he can do and being as consistent as a player as he as his talent, you know, allows. Shot clock down to five. Kale has it way outside. Miles Kale can't hit it. And there's Sammy with the rebound. Kale did it out of control. Found Roden. Back to the bounds with 12 to shoot. Now, if you go early in this game, it's Trey Mitchell. The ability for him to step out and knock down a shot. This one making himself available inside. And then once again, Understanding time and score, the pick and roll is there. If the big doesn't want to come out, he has the ability to knock it in. And again, for the juniors, you know, center being inserted into that lineup gives him a little bit more versatility offensively. Chris Beard and the coaches said recognize that. How about this, Bryce Aiken? Yeah, ended the game here for the first time. He missed their last game. He was under the weather with a Harvard transfer in there for the first time. But how does Miles Kale gets to the ring? But also good to see Cat Miles Kale back in the lineup. Healthy, you know, sat out, you know, missing three games with the groin. A groin is never an easy thing to come back from, but he looked explosive on that play there. Nearly thrown away. Allen tracks it down, and now a travel as we look back at Kill's bucket. It's a 7 0 Seton Hall run. Well, the 6 year grad senior has just been a staple for this program. I mean, to see him back again, came in, cut his teeth defensively. Tracked into the lineup, but he can also score the basketball. That's kind of veteran leadership you want if you're Kevin Willard. These teams are similar in that they brought in key transfers, but they do have key pieces coming back. Kale again! One of those key pieces. Over 1,000 points in his career, and he's got seven so far today. Well, he just picked up a tech, too, for uh, Tom, and I, I believe it was after the three. But to your point about the veteran maturity on these teams, the difference being is that with Kevin Willard's guys, they've been in the program for a little bit. With Chris Beard, as you see the technical being shot, Andrew Jones being back, you know, is a, is a good thing. But for Courtney the, Ramey. Courtney Ramey. But for the most part, you're bringing in older players that have to understand the, the system, which is new. But understand the philosophy of Chris Beard, too, so still learning process. And it's Andrew Jones to shoot the free throw with the technical on Kale. Jones, the first Longhorn other than Trey Mitchell to get in the scoring foul. How about Andrew Jones, his story? Remarkable. The senior forward. Not in the starting lineup, but adds so much value. And this is what put him at the line here. That was afterwards right there. Were you right there in front of the official? And I, you know, 
I get it. It's exciting. It was a big game. Do I think it's a big deal right there that deserves a tech? No. Um, I don't. You know, some things, when it's really taunting, you deserve it. Don't get me wrong. But you're going to have a lot of emotion in this game, especially early on. I think that time the official could just pull Miles to the side and say, hey, calm it down a little bit. Next time I'm going to get you. Probably try to fill him through there. Not the bounds by Samuel. You started to talk a little bit about Andrew Jones and his story. Yeah. Uh, it really is incredible. He arrived in 2016. He's a starter right away. He considered going to the NBA yep. after that first season. Decided to come back. Then during his sophomore year, he was diagnosed with leukemia. Yep. He beat leukemia. Resumed playing full-time in 2019. He's been all Big 12 both years since. And he's celebrating his 24th birthday today as a sixth-year senior for the Longhorns. All three's way off line and a rebound for Trey Jackson. You know, what's interesting is see Bryce Aiken pull up the deep right there and Samuels inside of Christian Bishop right there when pick up the foul. Is Marcus Carr. They covered him a lot at Minnesota. That was about 19 points a game. He was up for Big Ten Player of the Year, national first team. For him to now come and figure out his role with Texas because he was a high usage player at Minnesota, ball is his hands, looking to score. Now it's a little bit different. So he's still trying to figure out what his role is within Chris Beard's system. And that's kind of the whole thing, right? And that was the question coming into the year. A lot of great players coming in, but how do you piece them all together? How do they gel? And Chris Beard very early on said to his guys, let's take that as a challenge. Are you sick of hearing that yet? Are you sick of hearing? Oh, you can't gel these pieces from all over the place. And from the start, that's been a buy-in from this group. They're ready to do whatever they have to. And there is Carr knocking it down. His first points tonight. But you know what? There's no other coach that's better built to do that. Just because, like, when we talk to Chris, Beard because of this time at the Juco level at Arkansas Little Rock even Texas Tech he's used to getting new players in all the time whether that's transfers whatever it may be so he's built for that as he Sanders pull up and pick up the foul but to finish it Chris Beard is built for that and this is what teases you about Tyree Sanders right here at 6'10 soft touch the ability to put it on the deck a little step back. He feels his opponent, sees that the defense in Marcus Carr is coming to the baseline and made a quick decision to pull up for that jump shot. I mean, uber talented, prototypical NBA stretch four. It's just the consistency you need to see from him to really bring out all the talent that's harbored within that body. But, I mean, we see the raw talent. Now you're starting to see more consistent production. 22 in the last game. Yeah. More and more NBA attention for him. Six-point game. Under 12 minutes to go in this first half. Here's Courtney Ramey putting it on the deck. A little step-back jumper goes for the four-year starter. He's over 1,000 points in his career. And is one of those key pieces that Chris Beard got to come back after he took the job. We're talking about competing for a Big 12 title. This number seven Texas team will do, of course, and oh. 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 Yeah. Well, you love to have seniors, guys that understand the program, and no one's better than Courtney Ramey here for Chris Beard, able to knock in this two team that perennially is contending to win the Big East. You know, I mean, but he, he was able to change, I guess, the mindset, the mantra, and it is not easy, um, especially in a competitive Big East conference. Here's Samuel, right open off of the inbound play. And that's a great offensive set by Seton Hall, but it's poor defense by Texas in particular. I didn't see who it was that was guarding the ball, but you got to jump to the inside and force that pass to go out either towards half court or to the sideline. Kevin Willard was talking defense in his huddle. Chris Beard's always talking defense, always the staple of his teams. Here's Mitchell back in the game. He's already got eight for the Longhorns. A uh, good play that by Mitchell, but let's go back. Watch this play right here. I think it's Mitchell right here, and Samuels is right here. He's going to come around here. No one's on the ball, so everybody's looking around, looking around, and that's an easy pass inside. So Mitchell says, you know what? Let me make up for it on the offensive end right here. Put a little <laughs> shoulder into the chest of Tyrese Samuels and get yourself to the line. But those little plays out of bounds is almost like, you know, those extra 
think, what is it for, for in football like special teams mm -hmm. situation special situations you don't want to give anything up like that because those could come back to haunt you later on in the game those hidden points three-point game is completes the three-point play they can lost the handle for a moment, and he got it to the transfer, Jameer Harris. Back outside for an Aiken three. And a long rebound, tracked down by Timmy Allen. Allen, the Longhorns' leading scorer so far, although they've taken turns carrying the torch. They've had six different leading scores in their seven games this year. As Marcus Carr fills it up. Well, and you asked Coach Beer, too, like, is that going to be kind of the scheming what we'll see in the philosophy during the course. He said, yeah. So we don't need one player to kind of dominate the scoring column. It does make it a little bit more difficult when you're scouting. You know, who's going to you know, take the, the ball out of their hands. But right now, in a good position on the road, only down one. Shot clock inside five. Here's Samuel against Mitchell. Can't hit it. And then gets called for his second foul. You know, it's always good to eat healthy. You know what I mean? And have a healthy dose of Miles Kell never hurts your diet. And Kevin Willard and the Seton Hall fans have been able to see this for years. The young man has grown so much as a leader, as a player. To have him back, you know, as a grad, senior, someone experienced, someone you can lean on. But also, the coaches can trust that can monitor the locker room, all the little things that are non-basketball related. Miles Kale can bring to the table for you. And of course, a guy named Kale. It's a top. <laughs> it's a top. Oh, you got to believe. Yeah. He got a little bit more taste and flavor to it. <laughs> than just regular Smooth <laughs> left hand from Trey Mitchell, who is putting on a show so far, and he's put Texas in the lead. What to think about this? And that's going against where Ike o Obiago is not in the game. That isolation wouldn't be the same if you have the seven footer as compared to even though Tommy Samuel has some size, it's not the same as having Obiago inside. There's Richmond drilling a three, and Seton Hall goes back in front. Dari Richmond went back to back rough games against Michigan and Ohio State, has turned it on in the four game shift, He's averaging seven and a half points, seven and a half assists, and five rebounds in those four games. But in Syracuse transfer again. We know he can play. It's just a matter of playing within the system. Ramey ties it. And speaking of in the system, Ramey understands it. But, you you know, it's, guys have talent. There's no question. But how do you integrate that talent within the new philosophy of the system, but also understanding how to play with your teammates? They didn't have to go in this first half. Here's Trey Jackson. Transfer from Missouri. Coming off three high 22. And a... Huge win against the Division II program. They won by 46 over the weekend as the foul underneath is called. Yetna will go to the line. It's Trey Mitchell that gets whistled. In this Big 12 Big East battle, the eighth of the ten meetings this season. Last night, West Virginia with an upset win over UConn. So the Big East with a 4-3 advantage to the first seven matchups. I'm actually jealous because I wish back when I played. Now, we didn't have a conference tournament in the Big, Big Ten when I played either. But I wish we would have had a lot of these cross-conference yeah. because I didn't get a chance to play against some of the, you know, national teams. I did play against Seton Hall my junior year, Terry DeHair. Those guys were there at the time. But I love the, the challenges that go on because it gives you a sense and feel of other conferences, other styles of play, but it also provides a nice little report card on what you need to work on. You know, to get ready for conference season. Ramey sits down with two fouls. And Cunningham comes into the game. They to break the press here. Carr steps inside and lays it off for Allen. The first shot of the night is there in the foul. Oh. Timmy Allen, all Pac-12 player at Utah. Leading scorer for the Longhorns so far in 2021. Yeah, this is his excellent patience against his zone. Now, some tight quarters right there to make that pass. But how about Timmy Allen understanding that Trey Jackson probably would go for this pump fake, which he did. But then he was able to maintain his focus, eyes up, absorb the contact, get himself to the uh, free throw line. Average double figures all three seasons he was at Utah. 17 a game last year. 
He's over 13 per game so far this season. And he's playing for what he says is the best coach in the country, Chris Beard. Hey, I forgot to ask Coach Beard to see a turnover, or attempted turnover almost by Texas. Does he still play the music at practice? Oh, my God. <laughs> more and more people are doing it, right? Set the mood, set the tone. So, surprises, Wisconsin didn't think they would be as good as they were. You knew Purdue was going to be good and talented, but now where they're at is just, I mean, Matt Painter has those young men balling right now. Got a good one going here. Texas in front 24-23 in a top 25 matchup. But the team's still trying to learn what they've got, learn where they're at. Conference play not too far off. Here's Jared Roden, leading scorer for the Pirates on the season. Just one bucket tonight. This is a tough contest with three and a shot clock violation. Well, you th talk about controlling tempo. One way you do it in your half-court defense is to play a little zone. You take time off the clock. Now you don't have one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Chris Beard doing an excellent job of switching up the defense. This is a Seton Hall team that averages about 83 points a game. Okay? Right now they're at 23. So when you look at pace of play in favor of Texas, and now on offensive end, they're beginning to find their rhythm and see Marcus Carr able to break down a defense and get downhill. And we talk about them being efficient. This is a whole other level of that. Texas eight for its last eight. And a three-point lead for the Longhorns. Roden rises. Hierarch and Jumper wouldn't go. Rebound Brock Cunningham. With that very efficient offense, high field goal percentage, they don't turn it over very often. A lot of times you use them out of the shot clock. There's an aggressive take here from Carr, who draws the foul. I talked about Marcus Carr kind of finding his niche within the system. This is one thing they can do as well as anybody or any guard in the country, is seek his way, get two feet in the paint, and then navigate and finish. And then he went right back again, methodically able to pick up the foul. So... This will be a different Marcus Carr, different narrative, I believe, midway through the Big 12 season than what we're seeing now because he'll, he'll make the adjustments on what he has to do from an offensive perspective. That is a foul away from the ball on Kadari Richmond. And number six on Seton Hall, so Texas will shoot the rest of the half. And Chris Beard was saying with Marcus Carr, who's only averaging nine per game so far. Last year, average almost 20, third in the Big 10. He said, look, he... Right now, he's playing as good a defense as he's maybe ever played in his career. And it's not going to be too long before the whole picture, the well-rounded game, is as good as anybody in the country. Well, the last two games, 15 points, but his 8.2 assist to turnover ratio. Okay, running the team, and that's probably what he needs to show. And right there, Timmy Allen's showing off some of those muscles. But one thing we didn't give credit for Marcus Carr was running the offense at Minnesota. Now you're able to see a different version of him running this Texas offense. Yeah, that offense is a well-oiled machine right now. Leading by five as Jameer Harris leaves a three short. A long rebound that Roden gets and then promptly is fouled by Allen. Sixth foul on Texas. So just uh, catch you up if you're just joining us like Obiagu left the game earlier with an ankle injury he will not return Seton Hall says during the first half there's a chance you could see him after the break but without the seven footer for the remainder of this first half Richmond sits Aiken comes back in here's Samuel who is in the game with Obiagu out he's playing with two fouls Samuel has two, Jackson has two for the Pirates. Ramey and Bishop both with two for the Longhorns. Shot clock down to five. Here's Roden, knife it inside, and a tough finish through contact. Wow. And, but that's the ability of Jared Roden. You know, at 6'6", six, six, put on that weight upstairs, able to absorb that contact and kiss it softly off the, off the glass. Jones, tough angle pass. They share it to Allen. Long two off the heel. First miss in what feels like forever for Texas. Shooting above 60% in this half. Roden against Allen. Leans under him. In and out. Rebound yet now. And a foul. 
on Texas. One on one coming for the Pirates. Jared Roden right here able to catch it off the move. Trey Mitchell straight up in the air, kind of turns his shoulder. No help that time from the corner. Um, Andrew Jones allowed Roden to use that athletic ability and size to finish it. For Seton Hall, you just got to be patient. I know you want to get your shots. You want to get it up and down. Now, they beat Michigan scoring seven, 67 points. They beat Cal scoring 62 points. So they've shown that they can play, but again, you, you got to be patient uh, and, pick, and pick your spots against a team like Texas who wants to slow things down. Kevin yeah, Hearns the second. As Fremish comes back in, replacing Cunningham. And the transfer from South Florida. Got his econ degree. To Seton Hall now pursuing his business masters. Takes one of two, has Seton Hall back to within two. Jones pops. Can't hit the three. Five minutes left to go in this first half. Here's Bryce Aiken. Aiken gets all the way underneath, yet over the extra pass. They share it beautifully, and Harris can't hit it. Rebound yet now. And the whistle and a tie-up that has sent it to Texas. Well, but because of the quick push, the penetration and ball movement, now you're able to get an open shot for Seton Hall, and you got an offensive rebound that resulted into a jump ball. But that has to be the formula on a missed shot for Seton Hall to push it up quickly, exploit it to see if you have a shot. If not, have the defense scrambling. Now you may have a better look like we just saw that time from Jameer Harris. Kevin Askew into the game, second point guard for Texas. Kentucky transfer was five for the Longhorns. It's Allen Noda controls it. Timmy Allen gets inside, can't hit it. Rebound for Seton Hall and Samuel. Here come the Pirates. Roden into the paint. Finger roll, no. That was a tough shot. And tied up again. The possession error this time, keeping it with Seton Hall. Jared Roden wanted that foul. The official didn't think it was enough contact, but again, the quick push. No one was matched up when the shot went up. That time, Tyree Samuel able to wedge his way inside. Roden's going to take a seat. 4.15 to go in this first half. Miles Kale comes back in. Harris. Aiken. Offensive rebound, Samuel, who will head to the line for two. Following on Andrew Jones, first one on him, and a couple shots coming for Samuel. How about Samuel? Six rebounds already in eight minutes. And part of understanding offensive rebounds is knowing when the shot or where the shot is going to come off at. Sam was able to get himself on the left-hand side of the basket to get another offensive rebound. Tyrese out of Canada. He went home this spring. Strict COVID lockdown still. And so then most of his work came in parks outside. He said when he got back to Seton Hall this summer, he... Was so thankful to be in the gym. He was in there like three right. times a day and uh, reaping the benefits of that with this great start he's off to this year. Inside they go to Trey Mitchell. He has carried the Longhorns already 11 points. What a little help defensively here. There's a three and a foul on Aiken that will put Febris at the line. So Bryce Aiken follows Jace Febris while he's shooting the three. And with a two-point lead, Texas will be at the line. Yep. Still young this oh, yeah. season. Yep. Three shots coming here for Jace Febris, who was fouled prior to the break. Playing in his 112th career game today. He's had knee issues that have dogged him throughout his career. Surgery in February of 2020, and then still recovering from that. Missed the first couple of months of last year. Yeah. Well, in his fourth year, time is a start. Yeah, and always tough, too, especially when you come off a lower extremity injury, especially like a knee. 
trying to get your timing back. It affects you defensively, offensively. You've got to have confidence, too. I mean, when you come back and play, it's not as easy as I've gone through the rehab. Um, yeah, I'm ready to play, especially if you get into crowded areas where you have to jump. You're thinking about coming down wrong. So it's not always the physical comeback that you know, players are dealing with. It's the mental part. Makes off three. Five-point lead is Roden. Lays it off for a Yetna slam. Alexis Yetna, seven for the Pirates. One shot of a team high. Kills got eight. Leading Seton Hall. Here's Carr. And Aiken stumbling. Mm. And around and out with a jumper that's cleared by Yetna. Bryce Aiken. 0 for his first five. Rebound Mitchell. Allen goes into Harris with a size advantage. Banks it in. And I like how Allen, that time Timmy, took his time. Kind of crab dribbled a little bit. Trying to see if some help was coming. Then he spent to the baseline, able to knock it in. But listen, right here. The heart of the defense when you're facing the zone. Coaches always say, don't allow the ball to get there. But if you're the offensive team, that's where you want to get it. Because now it turns into a one-on-one -on -one situation, but you have numbers on the backside. If you help off the baseline, now you can drop it inside. Yetna able to benefit off of Roden's excellent passing and positioning inside that zone. Alexis Yetna had just four points in ten minutes in their last game. Seven and make it. A chance for more here as he gets fouled and heads to the line for two. Kadari Richmond did the same thing. Got two feet inside the paint. The Texas back line helping off the baseline. And I tell you what, Yetna doing an excellent job of playing peekaboo on the baseline by staying patient, not coming up too soon. So the pass has been available twice for him underneath. Former American Conference, Conference Freshman of the Year three years ago. And then he missed his second year with an injury. Came back last year, averaged close to a double figure for South Florida. And one of several transfers that have come in and impacted this team. And they brought back four of their top six scores from last year. But also three key transfers. And this one here in Alexis Yena has nine to lead the team. Three-point game, two and a half to go in this first half. Carr finds Mitchell. Got the defender to fly by and laid it in. Good patience. 13 for Trey Mitchell. Get the calling for it. Mitchell cuts in front of it and gets the steal. A tough play that time where Kell didn't throw it to the lead hand of Yetna where he was asking it on the baseline side. Carr tried to reverse it in, couldn't get it. Fabris tees up a second chance. Going baseline again. Mitchell. And that shot altered by Yetna. Bryce Aiken. Finds Roden. Penetrates. Gets fouled. And two shots coming for Roden. Roden was determined that time not to settle for a jump shot in the corner. Put the ball down and... And jumped his way right there, created the contact on Mitchell, and finally be able to get it. But watch this. Marcus Scar is going to attract so much gravity. He's going to pull the defense with him, and now you have an easy screen and roll. But that's the respect that you have for Marcus Carr. But then the lack of communication on the backside caused two guys to go with him. Easy roll for Trey Mitchell. <laughs> Christian Bishop replaces Mitchell, so that's one guy with two fouls replacing another. Longhorns have four players with two fouls and try to get to the final minute 33 here without any of those guys getting a third. Yeah. Christian Bishop, very familiar with the Seton Hall team, being that he came over from Creighton. Had his breakout season last year with the Blue Jays as they made the Sweet 16 run. Down to a three-point game. Inside they go to Bishop with that thing lodged under the rim. Seton Hall tries to count it. Here comes Aiken. The kick, but an offensive foul. I like the push. 
the execution part right here by Bryce Aiken has to understand that that jump stop that we see Villanova and their players do all the time eliminates that charge call right there if you do it consistently and then you have an open shot in the corner and now you find yourself with a turnover now you picked up another five which is his second it's that 1980s grainy teaching <laughs> tape video jump stop. Oh, I'm telling you, man. It's, it's the simple plays sometimes, bro, save you from turning the ball over and picking up five. One minute to go in this first half. Carr with a smooth step-back jumper. Eight from Marcus Carr and a timeout with 55 seconds. Well, it's all about closing out the... Three turnovers, which means that valuing the basketball, holding Seton Hall at 38% shooting. So, let's see if Seton Hall can finish off this half with a little momentum, cut into this lead. Pirates at 7 and 1. Already we have a win over top five team in Michigan. Mm, Roden high off the glass here with a high degree of difficulty. He's got eight points now. About a 12 second differential between game and shot clock. Here's Allen against Roden. Now Devin Askew. The kick. Jones. Grab it. Yep. Mid 19 seconds. It's a Texas turnover. But, but that's excellent defense that time from Seton Hall. They kind of converged, mucked it up a little bit. Didn't have a lot of space. Jones that time shuffled his puppies. And again, another opportunity for Seed the Hall to either cut this lead to one or tie it with a three. With the final shot of this first half if they want it. Under 10 seconds in the hands of Richmond. Syracuse transfer waiting. Attacking with five. Into the corner, Yetna. Next down a three. And we go to the break tied at 37 with Alexis Yetna leading Seton Hall with a dozen. You know, it hasn't been pretty for Seton Hall. Give a lot of credit to us, but also a great job by, I thought, Kevin Willard adjusting to that zone defense by Texas, attacking it and finding positive offensive plays from it. And adjusting to not having Ike Obiagi, yeah. and they will not have him for the remainder of this game. Official word from Seton Hall coming out. They're done. Uh, Ike Obiagi is done tonight with an ankle injury. So a lot more of Tyrese Samuel, who's playing with two fouls at this point, was able to get through that first half without getting the third, as was everybody on both teams. Timmy Allen, first shot of the second half goes, and quietly he's got nine. Texas in its first real test since the Gonzaga game back on November 13th. Seton Hall looking for a second top 10 win. Having beaten number four Michigan already. Miles Kale had eight points over the first six minutes of the first half. Has not scored since. In fact, for Seton Hall, Roden and Yetna have combined to score the last 16. Wide open three from Marcus Carr and barely got a piece of the rim on its way by. Yeah, maybe two wide open. That time, Miles Kell totally lost Marcus Carr, but fortunately for Seton Hall, not able to capitalize. And give Seton Hall a lot of credit, too. Only four turnovers, not that Texas turned up the pressure because coming into this game, their opponents were averaging 21 turnovers. And that was the one thing, Jimmy, in their one loss against Gonzaga. Granted, Gonzaga's as efficient of an yeah. offensive team as you're going to find, but they only forced six turnovers in that game. Ramey drills a three. Oh. Courtney Ramey gives Texas the five-point lead. And to your point about the turnovers, too, a lot of times you don't want to press up too much early with this home team in Seton Hall because if you don't get that turnover, now you open up opportunities for Seton Hall to get out and run and get the crowd involved. So strategically kind of peeling back just a little bit by Chris Beard or maybe some full-quarter, half-court pressure. Roden going to head to the line here after the first made three of the game for the Longhorns. This is good defense, Tyree Samuel, trying to give Ramey some room. Ramey said, you gave me a little bit too much, and I see all three of those right there. For number three, sitting out of St. Louis, Jared Roden goes to the line for two. Roden from Baldwin, New York. 
Knocks down the first free throw. Three things you need to know about Jared Roden. Grew up going to Knicks games. Actually grew up uh, a ball boy at Knicks games. Of Mice and Men, his favorite book, and the food that he hates. Onions? Onions? You can't hate Come onions. On, man. Bill Rafferty would not oh. like that right now. So he's got them both. Has Seton Hall back to within three. Carr quickly the other way to lay it in and move into double figures. I mean, the beauty of having a player like Marcus Carr is that his ability to go one-on-one -on -one and put the ball in his hands to make a solid decision in the point guard position is such a luxury to have. So high throw. Richmond pulls in. Now it's Roden working against Timmy Allen. Rises up to the top and knocks it down. And that was a matchup too. I wanted to see Timmy Allen leading score for Texas, but then Miles, I mean, Jared Roden, you know, for Seton Hall. Carr lost the handle there. Back comes Seton Hall with a kill three. Quick shot there that Ramey tracks down the long rebound down. Lobs up top and Phil hustles back to steal it. Back-to-back -back Texas turnovers. They had just four prior to that. Deep positioning Samuel. Takes advantage. Huge size advantage over Marcus Carr. And it was really no contest. Samuel now with six. Pirates back within one. Allen spinning and finishing. I mean, he hasn't had good defense. He was in a perfect position, but that's just Timmy Allen with better offense. A little fading away right there, able to knock in that tough two. At 11 now, he was really the one guy that had a good game offensively against Gonzaga. He had 18 that day. Nobody else had more than 11. Roden can't hit the baseline jumper. It falls to Allen. Allen pushing the other way. Offensive foul this time. His third. They go back to Jared Roden right here. Seeking out the switch. Timmy Allen, just a little late. Good D, better roll. When I go back to some VHS tapes that I got, bro, yeah. back then you thought it was crystal clear. Right. Now HD. you look at it, man, it's like we're in the 60s or something, bro. Yeah. It, is, it is crazy. A three-point game. Seton Hall with it. Joe Davis, Jim Jackson here at the Prudential Center, Newark, New Jersey. An intriguing matchup. Big 12 and Big East tonight for the top 25 teams. And an offensive foul right back the other way called on Jared Roden. Yeah, but Andrew Jones set that up. Because Willard wanted to get the one-on-one -on -one matchup inside. It was a little push off by Roden, but also with some great acting. Got a savvy veteran and Andrew Jones to pick up that offensive foul. The Texas team will maybe learn a little something going to Broadway. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, you pick it up. You never know where you learn your acting skills from. That's the, uh, is it the Jackson 5 show, <laughs> the new Jackson 5 Broadway show. And enjoyed it. Here's a baseline jumper from Devin Askew. He's still looking for his first points over the last three games. Kentucky transfer, one of the many transfers on this Texas squad. Here's one of them here in Christian Bishop. Backs inside, over the top of Sanders, no, and Sanders got the rebound. Well, that, that's just outstanding defensive discipline by Samuels, arm straight up, the Aiken. And the foul. You know, good defense on the other end, creates an opportunity for Bryce Aiken. Kind of uses quickness here. Andrew Jones a little late to the party, and... If you got a guy backpelling, you take advantage of it and watch the great defensive position by Tyree Sanger. Arms up in the air. Forces Bishop into a tough shot. Samuel 6.7 rebounds. And some good defense as Bryce Aiken gets his first points of the night. And a chance at a three-point play for the former Arl Ivy League player at Harvard. He's got it. And he's got a tie game again. I get a sense and feel that this game is going to be like this you know, for the rest of the way, especially the way Seton Hall is able to fight back in. Texas is able to control tempo. The teams are able to get some good shots, good stops, and not turn the ball over, put themselves in the situation to walk out of here with a W. Well, Texas is led for the majority of the game, but their largest lead is five. 
Jones can't hit the three. Another board for Samuel. Contest is only one for seven from behind the arc right now. Aiken might have gotten away with an extra step there. Now Roden. Seton Hall looking for its first lead since the eight-minute mark of the first half. Aiken against Cunningham. Goes by him. The floater mm. goes. And five in a row for Bryce Aiken. And talking to Kevin Roller, when Aiken first came to Seton Hall, it was that ability that he talked about. His ability to break down the defense, the floater in the lane, the decision-making. But the health has been an issue. But when healthy, Bryce Aiken can put up some numbers on the offensive end. Double comes to Mitchell. It still goes up, but can't hit. Rebound yet now. Aiken feeling it. That's <laughs> a serious <laughs> gumption there. I, I give him that based on this play right here. Just, just take a look right here. The, the lane is wide open, okay, for Aiken to kind of do his thing one-on-one -on -one against Cunningham. And because... Trey Mitchell is guarding Samuels. He doesn't want to overhelp because either you give up the drop pass or the lob. So he was caught in between. And Bryce Aiken hit his head like, man, maybe I shouldn't have took that shot. Was smart enough to hit that runner instead of getting closer to the rim. So he earned he earned one mistake. It's a mulligan on that one. Backwards I'll give it mulligan. to him. I don't know if Coach Willard will. But <laughs> Coach Willard says he might be the smartest player he's ever coached. Wow. And that's, I mean, but... He, and a player like that knows it, too. You, 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 don't can have, you can just give him a look, and he's like, yeah, coach, I got you. Right. The look, the eye, car off the heel. Rebound, Timmy Allen. Brady passed up an open three, and then missed the mid-range jumper. It's a 9-2 run for Seton Hall, keep by this man, Bryce Aiken. Here's Roden. Jared Roden fades away and knocks it down. Timeout, Texas. And this is the growth and the rush of the coach and then become the potential national player of the year. He follows in that same footprint of being patient, growing his game, and now the ball is in his hands when they, meaning Seton Hall, need him the most. And that's a great compliment, not just to Kevin Willard, but to this young man who put in a lot of work to get his game to where it's at. Trey Mitchell had 13 in the first half, looking for his first points of the second. Camped out in that lane for a while, gets out just in time. Shot clock inside 10, here's Marcus Carr. Carr kicks, Mitchell rises. Short with a three. Long rebound to Harris. 7-0 run for the Pirates. Trey Jackson coming off career high 21 in their last game. Mitchell goes straight up and saves the ball to Allen. Longhorns looking for their first bucket in four minutes. Remember, this team in the first half shot almost 60%. They hit nine shots in a row at one point. Here, Ramey gets inside and gets fouled. And they'll try to break this scoring spell at the foul line. Well, the ball's getting stuck a little bit more for Texas. Again, they came out in the second half, scored a couple points early. But then now, the last few possessions, the ball is stuck. I thought they had great success in the first half, in particular with Marcus Carr and Trey Mitchell in that middle pick and roll, spreading out the Seton Hall defense and then kind of exploiting that. So let's see if... Uh, the Longhorns can get back to better ball movement, body movement, and utilize that pick and roll a little bit more. Foul, by the way, was on Bryce Aiken. It's his third. <laughs> Roden, after a quick rest, is back in. Kale sits down. One more for Ramey. Texas, nine for nine at the free throw line. It's a two point game. Jameer Harris. Nearly turned it over, but a kick ball will keep it on this end. 12 well, one left to go. One of these teams going to get a top 25 win tonight. 
Kevin Willard's team looking for its second top 10 win. And Texas looking for its first really impressive win of the year. They lost their one true test against Gonzaga. Here's Yetna. Lost the handle, but to right to Roden, and then it was knocked out of bounds. And it'll stay on this end of the floor. On the other side of this, media timeout and a two-point game. Coming off of last year, I had a lot of surprises, bro. So that's an easy one. That, you, that was that you was. You sold yourself short. You were really good there. No, no, but you know what? I spread it out so it wouldn't just be one. I, I protected myself that time by putting a bunch of surprises <laughs> in there. Yeah, right. <laughs> Way to go, if Steve. You, if you say everybody, then you're exactly. not going to get it wrong. Exactly. It's an offensive foul, and it's back over to Seton Hall. You know, Steve Shear has some of Oh, missed, big though. time. And we're going to even we're going to formally tell you you missed some by putting it up there graphically. Oh, Arizona, yes, Arizona has been huge. I'm talking about they look like an early candidate for a Final Four team. Again, it's still early. But I think it's just one of those years where you just don't know. Again, it's still too early to predict what's going to happen in your conferences. But a lot of intrigue, I think, early, which is outstanding for college basketball. Timmy Allen goes right up and twice gets denied by Samuel. Two-point game with 11.30 to go. Allen left alone this time. Outside Jones. Extra pass and a tie game on a slam from Mitchell. I, I say this. Excellent defense by Seton Hall. Multiple efforts. But how about the patience by the Longhorns to kind of get the shot they wanted ultimately. Trey Mitchell with, like Coach Laff says, the zero footer. <laughs> Zero footer, That's zero true. inches, zero centimeters. <laughs> you gotta be in threes now. Gotta threes. be in threes. Kale off balance, put Seton Hall back in front. Well, that, that wasn't a three, but number 22 was able to get to the baseline and pull up for that nice little jump shot to kind of give Seton Hall a two point lead, push him back up a little bit. Well, a couple guys who were very productive in the first half, getting their first buckets of the second, back to back there Trey Mitchell and then Miles Kale. Here's Mitchell again. Off the glass, rattles it in. A new high for him at Texas, 17. How about the side pick and roll this time, the two-man game between uh, this car, Trey Mitchell, able to exploit that and give Mitchell a nice little shot. Bryce Aiken, who was frustrated with himself for firing up a bit of an ill-advised three earlier, is offline there. Aiken trying to do what he did for the Pirates against Michigan in that win in Ann Arbor this year. We had 11 of his 13 points down the stretch in that game. Yep. Stop and start Ramey. Feeds Allen. Out of bounds and last touch by Texas as we look back at Mitchell's last score. And i tell you what, Trey Mitchell said he called this too. He, he said it. Yeah, That's what he said. Uh, off the glass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, but when it's going for you, it's going for you. You see what he has right there for the season 17. Now keep in mind now, you know, while he's at UMass, he averaged 18 and 7. Yeah, this is what he did this, this two years. So, you know, for those that haven't been able to watch him play and are new, you know, to watching Trey Mitchell play, play and even fans of Texas right now, he can give you those type of numbers. So, yeah, it's as high at Texas, but as high at UMass, was 37. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's one of the top scorers in the conference the last couple of years there. Roden can't hit yet into the rebound, but then right through the hands of Samuels. Starting to think about how hard he was going to dunk it. Yeah, and that one, too, is tougher for a big to go down and grab that at the bottom unless that pass comes off the ground high enough. I think Samuels was looking for it and threw it up a little bit so he can use those long arms and that athleticism to throw it in. And Samuels has been playing more and more as the season has gone on for Seton Hall, but he's going to play pretty much the entire game tonight. Michael Diagu left five minutes into the game with an ankle injury and will not return. Back inside to Trey Mitchell. Again, Samuel kicks it for Carr. Mitchell, two to shoot, gets to the rim and with the left hand puts Texas in front. And, and see, Trey Mitchell's ability to shoot that jump shot that little pump fake caught Samuels to get him in the air, and that opened up the driving lane. So good utilization of the pump fake, able to get himself inside the two. Kadari Richmond has had a quiet night, but he evens the issue here with his second bucket, locked at 54. 
What a fun game this has been. Eight and a half to go and tied up. Mitchell will try a three. Uh -uh. I was about to say, he's getting it. Foul on the floor goes on Seton Hall. Hey, we give you that, Trey, because you deserve it. Right now, just doing yeoman's work inside, making himself available off the dribble right here. That was coming off of a pump fake. And Sammy was a little late to the party, but there's a reason why Chris Beer said, yeah, yeah, well, Trey Mitchell fits perfect with what I want to do. And... Again, he wasn't starting at the beginning of the season. The last five games before this one, five games ago, he's got that's when he got inserted into the starting lineup. So Chris Beard looking pretty, pretty smart right now. Well, there's been a couple changes to that lineup early on this season. Mm -hmm. He says probably not going to be the last, still feeling it out. Now it's Mitchell with the vision, sharing the ball for a cutting yeah. Allen. Well, Andrew Jones was starting, went to the bench. So, you know, coaches with changes still trying to figure out, too, what's the best lineups, what's the best rotations. Yeah, that's the other thing that Mitchell consistently had, has done well, had to share the ball. Mm -hmm. Really good vision, really good passer. Here's Yetna with a corner three. Roden has the offensive rebound. Up in traffic to mm. tie it again. Ten tie of the game. And a timeout with 741 left. Uh, sometimes you gotta figure Kevin Willard's team trying to move to eight and one, looking for their second top ten win already. Texas trying to get to seven and one. Already ranked in the top ten. Um preseason expectations on everything this roster has in terms of resumes of the individual players they hope come together to form a national champion contender this year under seven and a half to go here's Timmy Allen and now Courtney Ramey under 10 to shoot Ramey working against Richmond inside to Trey Mitchell who's been the man tonight for Texas this time it won't go but you got the shots you wanted. That time, Mitchell had the height advantage over Jared Roden instead of forcing up a long jump shot. Got it down the tree. He's been hot. Just unfortunately, able to knock that shot in. I think the foul. Yeah, a little out of control there for Richmond. Yeah. But the experience of Marcus Carr right there to kind of slide in and anticipate the spin move right there. That's a lot of contact to absorb. And another look to straight, outstanding one on one defense. Under seven now as Carr brings it up. He's had a good night. He's got 10 for Texas. A couple figures with Mitchell, who's got 19. Allen's got 13. It's Carr on the floor. Wide open underneath Allen. Defense recovers, and the shot is wide. Well, that's where that size of Seed the Hall comes into play. Allen had a little daylight without able to finish. Neither is Miles Kale no. down to the floor. Richmond has it, throws it into a crowd, and Texas takes it. Ramey looks to push. Courtney Ramey finds Andrew Jones. Still looking for his first bucket of the night. Allen's able to get the offensive rebound with much taller players surrounding him. A double-double for Timmy Allen. His first is a Longhorn. Round of 10 in the shot clock. It's Ramey. Rebound Roden. Jared Roden goes inside to Miles Kale. Wanted to get it to Yetna, but couldn't. Scramble for the ball. And a foul. And I tell you, Seton Hall got away with that one. It was a good defense interior-wise. By Texas and at the foul card and, you know, a couple empty possessions by Seton Hall. The turnover. Like a Barry Richmond had an opportunity. Foul there was on Courtney Ramey, his third. That's four on Texas, five on Seton Hall. It's been a very clean game for the most part. Low foul totals, low turnover totals. Yep. There's a foul on the floor that's going to go on Trey Mitchell, number three on him. And I think so, too, because the pace of the play is not up and down and hectic. You're not getting as many of those live ball turnovers and you know, you know, that you would normally see in a game. 
So give credit to both teams. One seed and Hawk for being a little bit patient and not trying to beat the defense with the first shot or first pass. And that foul, Jim, is uh -oh. actually on Timmy Allen instead of Trey Mitchell's uh -oh. third. It's Timmy Allen's fourth. Leading scorer on the season for Texas and has a double-double tonight. He sits with five and a half to go. Here's Roden. Wow, he got the roll, and Seton Hall's got the lead. Oh, I'm cooking, man. What do you mean? Oh, I'm cooking. It's sat on top of the back. It <laughs> didn't roll in now. Back to Mitchell. I'm sh I mean, Allen. I'm sure Chris Beard away to the under four timeout to try to bring him back at that point. We'll need him for the rest of this game. Carr. Mm -hmm. Popped out. Rebound yet now. Able to maintain his balance. Tight rope in that sideline. Under five left is Aiken controls. Bryce Aiken puts it on the floor, gets to the rim. Offensive board Samuel and knocked out of bounds by Ramey. Let me go back to the last play. Outstanding inbounds play call, but here's Jared Roden one on one. A little dead shot. You're at home, get the shooter's touch. Yeah, good thing that. Oh, he's been set up there for a moment, but hey, sometimes you'd rather be lucky than good. <laughs> Take it. Two-point lead for the Pirates. Let's see if they get back into that pick and roll. There you go, Samuels and Aiken. Samuel there for the screen. Roden comes and gets it. Fires away. Somehow Kale's able to get it. Seton Hall continues to win the glass battle. A short three from Aiken and a rebound from Mitchell. Yeah, and that time Aiken, I know you wanted that shot, and a lot of times the defense is scrambling off of a missed shot before, but you probably could have peeled that one back, ran another play, probably got a higher percentage shot again. The possessions are valuable right now. Texas turning it over. Seton Hall looks to counter. Here comes Aiken. Under four left in a two-point game. Tyree Samuel, size advantage on Febris. Help coming, shovels it off for Yetna, but it's stolen. Back-to-back -back turnovers for two teams that have been really clean for the most part tonight. Yeah, but as you get tighter into the end of the game, sometimes you start to overthink the situation. Both teams not comfortable turning it up, but you kind of expected this kind of game early, Jay, so this team is going to live making mistakes. Want to make you sure, get, and again, in a two-point game, an important yep. game, yep. for both sure tried. that we get it right. Yep. And they are confirming these six fouls on the Pirates, five on Texas. Let's finish this one off. 3.40 to go in a two-point game. Texas with the ball. They've led for a lot of the game. They're down two here. In the hands of the senior, Courtney Ramey. Under 10 to shoot. Now Marcus Carr. Shot clock down to five. Carr lost the handle. Ramey found it. Throws it up. Off the heel. Ake it up to get it. Tough possession that time for Texas. And long wait. Now you kind of throw him back into the game. Yetna out of the corner. Gets one to fly by. Down the baseline. Some contact, but no call. And Jones clears it for Texas. But, but that was great defense by Trey Mitchell to go straight in the air. He didn't launch. He didn't come down. Uh, influence Yetna shot. Timmy Allen playing with four fouls. Backs in on Roden. Allen into the corner for Mitchell. Boy, halfway down and popped out. That close to giving Texas the lead. Two and a half to go in a two-point game. Bacon pestered by Carr. Yeah, just out of sorts there. Kevin Willard senses it, calls a timeout. Just one left for the Pirates. Four. Already with a double double on his line. 13 points and 10 rebounds. One of a pair of double doubles for the Longhorns. Mitchell has one as well. So you can see this middle pick and roll, some kind of 
with the H and R. Jared Roden. They get it in bounds first, and they do to Roden. So here we go. Under 10 to shoot. Roden takes it right down the lane. Tough shot. Tough. Rebound Mitchell. Another really good half-court defensive stance by Texas. Timmy Allen against Yatna. Gets underneath and steps on the baseline. Offense may not be crisp for both sides, but the defensive end, both teams are walling up. And how about Yetna utilizing the baseline as another defender to cause Timmy Allen to step out right there and on the side. And they're going to review this with a minute 55 to go. And it may look like, too, because on that last play, it looked like his foot, the side of it, I think probably this is what they're looking at. Did it, did it, is, is it side right here? See, this is a tough angle to see it. Because if you look at it from right there, I don't know if it's out, because we can't see it from underneath the basket, or if it's just hovering the line. And I'm sure the officials there will have different angles to be able to confirm or overturn the call. I'll say this, Jimmy. The one thing you can see for sure on that look is that James Breeding is staring right at that his is, foot. Yeah, that's and true. He's too. right on top yep. of it. So he's right there. Good, good call on that, Jim. And the call is going to stand with a minute 55. Seton Hall will have it with a two-point lead. Both these offenses impressive, efficient in the first half. have kind of disappeared here down the stretch. If one offense can figure it out, one possession or two might be the difference in this game here. Well, also, too, if you're not shooting the ball well, can you figure out a way to get to the free throw line? Yeah. Okay, cause, because now it takes a little bit of the burden and pressure off. You're trying to be perfect, but again, the execution part, the patience on the offense against see if Texas come over to the stop with Seton Hall able to finally crack this cold of Texas defense. Roden attacks, turnaround jumper, too strong, and a foul puts Samuel at the line. His sixth offensive rebound of the game. That is one spot where Seton Hall has been dominant on the offensive glass. Yep, better job in the second half of Texas taking it away, but just when you thought that you had it under control, a four-step shot, and Samuel able to get that 6'10 body right underneath the basket. Samuel is a 71% free throw shooter. 0 for 3 tonight, though. Oh, boy. This has been, among Big East teams, the best free throw shooting team in the conference over the first month and a half of this season. 75% as a team, and there's the second. That'll get you up three, get you a little breathing room. And Texas, you don't need a three unless you're wide open. Put some pressure on Seton Hall's defense to have to guard you again. It's that middle pick and roll with Carr and Trey Mitchell. They're going back to. Carr probing for room. Into the lane. Gives up his dribble. Tough shot. Wouldn't go, and Kale's got it at a minute 20. But well, see, that's where the size at 6'6". Six, six. On Miles Kale, on Marcus Carr, huge on that defensive possession. Aiken goes down the lane and then pulls it out. Aiken fouled by Carr. On the floor, one and one coming for Bryce Aiken, who's a 77% foul shooter. And the fourth foul on Courtney Ramey. And the team's seventh backwards, Texas, into the penalty and sends. I beg your pardon on Marcus Carr. Well, it's intelligence down the stretch of the game to understand what the penalty situation is of your opponent. Wow. They continue to leave the door open at the line. Three-point game with one minute left to go. Texas has missed its last eight shots. Ramey drives. It's Allen. It's a one-point game. And a timeout from Chris Beard. One lap for Texas. Texas makes a 30 second. How many times have we seen it? The dribble penetration. Pirates with the chance at a second top 10 win already. Hands of the six-year senior point guard Bryce Aiken. It's 
And it comes to screen. Aiken against Raymond. Steps back. And knocks it down. Bryce Aiken. He was 0 for his first 7 from 3. His first one of the night is a huge one. Now it's Timmy Allen back the other way to cut it to 2. 23.9. Texas uses its final timeout. When you go back to Aiken's butt, each other teammate, make sure you do it. It's Miles Kale, little inbound, one of those veteran players. The your senior has rode in Yetna and Aiken on this end of the floor. And it's into Aiken. Texas waiting to pounce. They're able to break it to Kale with 15 seconds. It's Aiken that they choose to foul. And that was an interesting strategy by Chris, Coach Beard. It was more of a half-court trap when the ball got inbounded, which bled some time off the clock. And then once you got over half-court, you fouled. See, so different ways of thinking about how to influence a turnover. But Seton Hall did an outstanding job of staying spaced, made the correct pass, and now Aiken finds himself back to the line. This is still a one-and-one. This time he's got it. And here comes the big one with a chance to make it a two-possession game. Bryce Aiken, just like he did on the road at Michigan, stepping up in the second half. All nine of his points, all ten of his points, have come in the second half. Four-point game with ten seconds to go. Here's Carr. Now well, it's Ramey. They've got to go. Ramey, no, the tip follow won't go. Allen throws it up, no, and Seton Hall has its second top ten win of the year. Sixty-four to sixty, the final score.